This is a summary of the final project that we're doing for the Begin Python course. Now, in each of the 12 modules, we went through uh, and added individual pieces to the final project, but I wanted to do one final video just to show the whole final project and uh, give a little bit of an explanation as everything came together. So we have this incubator that we're trying to design, um, and it can be for any number of eggs. Uh, the one that we're going to focus on are chicken eggs, uh, but we could uh, design the control for others as well. We have this, uh, this temperature control device where we have some of the heaters uh, right here, the heaters and then the temperature sensors which are measuring the temperature. There are two heaters and two temperature sensors. We're only going to use one of them, though. We also have an LED that can turn on or off with commands from Python. And so we're going to use this as a simulator, as if we had an egg incubator. And we're going to focus on the temperature control. Although for egg incubators, you also need to maintain humidity and turn the eggs as well. All right, so the objective of this is to program the temperature control lab, which is our simulated incubator, to maintain a temperature 1 at 37 degrees Celsius uh, before a chicken egg. And by adjusting the heater Q1, we want to display the heater level Q1 with an LED indicator as the program is adjusting the temperature. We'll create a plot of the temperature and heater values over a 10-minute evaluation period. So I'm going to go through this whole project just in one. We're going to import some libraries. Uh, we'll connect to the temperature control lab. So this is an example of pseudocode where we've mapped out the whole process at a high level. And then we'll fill in the details. We'll create some storage for our heater and temperature values. Uh, and that would be so that we can plot them later. Uh, we'll give an initial heater value and then set the target temperature. All right, and then read the temperature. Monitor every second for 10 minutes. We're going to create a loop. And if it's too low, we'll increase the heater value. And if it's too high, we will decrease the heater. And then we'll set the heater level. We'll display the heater level with an LED. So when the heater is on, the LED will turn on. And then we'll disconnect from the TC lab when we're done. And then after 10 minutes, we'll display a plot of the data. So let's go ahead and start importing some libraries like TC lab. We'll import time as well. If you don't have TC lab, just come to your Anaconda prompt and you can do pip install tc lab or whatever package that you might need all right so those are already satisfied and if you have don't have administrative privileges just use dash dash user that isn't your username it's just dash dash user okay uh, back to here if uh, we have numpy as well although i don't think we're going to need numpy for this one, but we will need matplotlib. And we'll need to include the percent matplotlib inline to be able to display the plot here in the um, native browser that you're using. We'll connect to the TC lab. We'll go lab equals TC lab dot TC lab. That's an example of a class that we're using where lab is going to be the child and the parent is going to be the TC lab package dot TC lab. We're going to create some storage for the heater and temperature. Here's the number of data points that we want to cycle through, which is 600. And we'll create time as an empty list. We'll create temperature storage as an empty list. And then our heater storage as an empty list. We'll give an initial heater value of 0. And then a target temperature value. We're going to create a dictionary now because it might not just be for chicken eggs, it might be for frogs, and those might have a lower temperature target. Chicken might be 37, alligator egg might be 30. Okay, we'll print the target. And we'll print not just the 
target, uh, we could print all of the values, but we're just going to do the keys of those. So the first ones, like frog, uh, chicken, and alligator, just to give an option of how they can input um, one of those animal's eggs. Okay, so the animal is going to be input, and we're going to ask what is the type of egg at the very beginning. And then we're going to have our set point temperature be the target with that animal's egg, and that will fill in the temperature, uh, the integer value into TSP. And then we'll say the target temperature is, and we'll do this as a formatted string, and we'll put in temperature set point. Now we want to read the temperature. We're going to create a function for this because we're going to do it over and over. And we will read putting in the heater value because we want to display that as well. And then we'll return something at the end. We also want to append to this list. So you saw back up here that we are creating this storage. Now we want to append to it to be able to add a temperature to our list as we go. Okay, we're going to have some documentation here. We need to encapsulate that in three uh, single quotes. And then when you, if you ever type help read temp, it'll print out this help for you. All right, we're going to append lab.t1. Now again, lab was the child object that we had. That's our connection to the TC lab. We want to print. We're going to print temperature and the Q value. And we're going to do this as a formatted string literal. OK, with seven characters that we're going to take up and two decimal points and display it as a floating point number. OK, and same thing for the heater value. And we'll do dot format. So here is our string. And then in the dot format, we're going to put what we want to substitute in right here and right here. All right, we're going to do the very last TS value, the stored temperature value. And if you put negative 1 here, it goes to the very end of the list to display that one. And then we also have the Q value that we had as an input to that function. And then we also have time.sleep. We're going to sleep for one second after we read the temperature and print it out. And then we'll return TS negative 1 just back if we need the temperature. Uh, this function is going to read the temperature and then return the uh, temperature, just the very last value. And we want to monitor every second for 10 minutes. We're going to do a for loop. And in here, it's going to be for i in range. And we'll do n plus 1 just because we'll go 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 600. Now we're going to read the temperature. We're going to call this function right here and input our current Q value as well. So this is going to return the current temperature 1 value. And then we're going to append to our time value. And we're going to be doing this every second. So I is going to be our iterator. It's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. We're just going to append that value to time. And then we're also going to have QS.appendQ. So we're going to append the Q value as well so we can plot that later. Now if it's too low, we want to increase the heater. So if T1 is less than TSP, we're going to do something. And if it's too high, we'll decrease the heater. So if it's too low, set it to 100. And if it's too high, we'll set it to 0. So it's just on-off control. It could go somewhere in between. And you might figure out something to do to make it a little bit smarter so it doesn't cycle as much as you'll see. Then we want to set the heater level. So through our connection to the lab, we're going to use the Q1 function and just put in the new value of Q. It's going to be 0 or 100. And we want to display the heater level with the LED. So when it's 100, when the heater's on, the LED is going to turn on. Then we'll close uh, the connection to the temperature control lab. And then after 10 minutes, this is all done, all of the data is collected, now we're going to plot the data. So we're going to create a new figure, we'll make it a 10 by 6 inch figure. And uh, here's our subplot. First one, we want to display here 
the time and the heater value. And we're going to make that a red dashed line and give it a label that's Q uh, subscript 1. So there's a little bit of a tech here encapsulated by the dollar sign with a raw, that's not red, it's raw um, string. And so we can have a tech in there. All right, so let's create a Y label. That's going to be our heater percent. And then we also have our second subplot. And we're going to plot this. And this one's going to be our temperature set point. I'm just going to go between 0 and the very last value. So it's going to do 0 and then 600 right here. And then I'm going to plot uh, 37, 37 if it's for the chicken egg. That's going to be a black line. And I'll say that's our target temperature. Now the next subplot is going to be time and the temperature that's stored. And this one is going to be a blue dotted line with a label of T subscript 1. Uh, and again, the dollar sign that is for LaTeX. Here's our legend. And then we have X label and Y label. And then I'm going to save the figure as incubator.png. And then I'll show it. Okay, so there is our final project. I'm going to go ahead and run this now. And then we'll just look at uh, the results. Okay, so it's going to, uh, let me come back here. You can see the heater just turned on. That is our LED right here that indicates the heater value. And you can see uh, what we're going to see here is that the it's going to start turning pink here. There's going to be some paint on this. It's thermochromic paint, which means it's going to change color when the temperature increases. All right. Um, let's come down here and just select what is the type of egg. We're going to choose uh, chicken in this case. All right, and there you can see it running. Um, you can see it flashing underneath. Every time it communicates, it's sending a signal to the Arduino through that uh, serial port. And so you'll see some LEDs flashing underneath. All right, and it's going to run for 10 minutes. And we'll see it start to heat up. You can just watch uh, the temperatures here as it goes. Uh, you know, a more sophisticated plot might do something where it updates the plot and shows it to you as you go. Or you can just, as we've done here, uh, print these out um, so you can watch the temperature as it's going. The target is 37. So once it gets above 37, we should see this heater value turn to zero and the LED will turn off. Okay, so we'll uh, watch this for a little bit more. Every cycle, it's going up by a couple fractions of a degree. And uh, when we hit 37, then that is going to be our uh, when that LED will turn off. And you can already see it um, turning a little bit pink right here. Okay, you don't really want to touch this uh, when it gets hot because, uh, you know, it's going to be about a 37 degrees Celsius, which is about body temperature, but uh, if it gets hotter than that, then uh, you don't want to touch it. Okay, so uh, there's the paint. You can see it turning a little bit pink there, um, just to indicate the temperature. And you can see that the LED just turned off, and so that means that the heater value was zero. So it showed it here. Okay, it's been off for a little bit. It got up to about 41, almost 42 degrees Celsius before it started going down again. Okay, I'm going to pause this, and then we'll um, pick it up again when the uh, it finishes, and then we can see the final plot. It just finished. Let's go down and look at the plot. If we come down here, we'll see our heater value that turned on and off at different intervals. When it was below 37, it was on. And you can see the temperature here. It rose, and then when it reached 37, the heater turned off. But the temperature continued to rise. 
just because the heat was still transferring to the temperature sensor. And then it dropped, and then you can see it uh, reach below 37, and the heater turned back on again. Okay, and then you can see it uh, cycle maybe about two degrees high, about one degree low, as you're trying to maintain the temperature. All right, this is an example of just on-off control that you might see like in a home with a heating or air conditioning system that turns on or off, although they typically use a dead band here so that you maintain a comfort zone and avoid cycling your heater or air conditioner too much. All right, this is the uh, final project. Let me just go back to where we have our uh, source files here. And I'll show you, um, this is the course project here on the right. So if you just select that, it'll show you, oh, I went too far out. Uh, okay, so here is the begin Python with TC Lab. And this shows the link to the GitHub repository where you can find all of the files that we covered in this course. And uh, each of these individual exercises helps you to put everything together for this final project that we just did. So if any of it didn't make sense, I encourage you to go back and look through these individual exercises and the videos that are associated with them. And we work on the project in more detail as we go through each one of these.